one of the main equilibrium systems you'll come across with in your study of chemistry this year is the reversible reaction between iron 3 plus ion and a complex ion here called thiol cyanates. Now in chemistry it is important to keep in mind that the word thiol, T-H-I-O, refers to the atom of sulfur and that's what the word thiol refers to in this complex ion, so thiol cyanate. The reaction between these ions will produce a complex ion known as iron 3 plus thiol cyanate. And the reason why we are studying this reversible reaction is because iron 3 plus ion dissolved in water will give you a yellow color while the complex ion between iron and thiol cyanate will give you a blood red appearance as you can see in the diagram on the right hand side. The usual way you will form this complex ion is by mixing a solution of iron nitrate with a solution of potassium thiocyanate. This not only forms the complex ion, iron thiocyanate, but also potassium nitrate. In this equation at the top, it is important to keep in mind that potassium ions and nitrate ions are merely spectator ions. What this means is that they actually do not participate and they are not part of the chemical equilibrium. So usually what we write is really the second form, which is the net ionic equation. Since there are no gaseous chemicals in this equation, pressure and volume changes will not affect the reaction. Let's look at a few ways how this equilibrium system can be affected. The addition of sodium hydrogen phosphate, as shown by test tube number B, will react with iron 3 plus ion to form another complex ion, which is iron hydrogen phosphate. Now, this will decrease the concentration of iron 3 plus, which if you think about Le Chetre's principle again, it will shift the equilibrium to the left side, towards the reactant side, and that will in turn increase the concentration of iron 3 plus ions. Because iron 3 plus has a pale yellow color, and iron thiocyanate has a blood red appearance, this will make the solution turn less blood red and more pale yellow, or even colorless, as you can see in this test tube, as the concentration of iron thiocyanate decreases. So if you compare test tube B to test tube A, you can see that compared to the reference, which is a control test tube, test tube B has a much paler or transparent appearance. Adding more potassium thiocyanate will increase the concentration of thiocyanate ions. This will shift the equilibrium to the right hand side in order to reduce the concentration of thiocyanate ion. Now, as the equilibrium shifts to the right hand side, the concentration of iron thiocyanate increases, while the concentration of our iron 3 plus ions will decrease. And this will cause the solution to become more blood red. If you compare the color of test tube C, versus test tube A, you can see that the color of the blood red appearance is slightly more intense and darker compared to the one in test tube A. In test tube D, we are adding iron nitrates. This will increase the concentration of iron 3 plus ions, which like before, it will shift the equilibrium to the right hand side in order to reduce the concentration of iron 3 plus ions. This will cause the concentration of iron are starting to increase and the concentration of iron 3 plus ions to decrease. Again, this will make the solution appear more blood red. So if you look over the right hand side on the diagram, you can see the color of C and D look very similar, both of which are again more intense or more blood red compared to the color of test tube A. A common reagent that we add to many equilibrium systems is silver nitrate. In this example, Silver ions will react with thiocyanate ions to produce a white precipitate, that is, silver thiocyanate. This causes the concentration of thiocyanate to decrease, which in turn will move the equilibrium to the left side in order to increase the concentration of thiocyanate ion. And similar to before, this will decrease the concentration of iron thiocyanate but increase the concentration of iron 3 plus ions. Now you might think this will make the solution appear less blood red and more pale yellow, but the formation of the white precipitate actually makes the solution look cloudy and white, 
as evident in the diagram on the right hand side. The Ford reaction of this equilibrium is exothermic. Thus, heating will shift the equilibrium to the left side as the reverse reaction is endothermic. So by doing so, heat is absorbed from the surrounding. The movement of the equilibrium to the left hand side will reduce the concentration of iron thiocyanate and thus the solution becomes less blood red. Cooling has the opposite effect. At a lower temperature, the equilibrium position will shift to the right side in order to produce heat by favoring the exothermic reaction. This movement of equilibrium to the right hand side will increase the concentration of iron thiocyanate ion and thus make the solution appear more blood red. On the image on the right hand side, you can clearly see different shades of the blood red appearance in a test tube when they are submerged in different temperatures of water. When the test tube is submerged in cold water, it has the darkest shade of blood red, and that is because cooling will allow the solution to become more blood red by raising the concentration of iron thiocyanate. On the other hand, when the test tube is submerged in hot water, you can see the shade of blood red is the least intense, and that is because heating will shift the equilibrium to the left side, and thus it will decrease the concentration of the iron thiocyanate complex, making the solution less blood red.